In this part, I'm going to discuss the trend analysis. Trend analysis, you can see it in the Humphrey, the mean deviation and visual field index. Also, you can see it in the octopus, in the mean deviation, the square root loss variance, the difference, defect, the diffuse defect, and the local defect. Also, there is another software depends on the trend analysis I'm going to discuss later. So this part of the presentation, I'm concentrating on this. <clears throat> Most glaucoma patients will show some progression if followed up long enough. It is important to determine a patient's velocity of disease progression. Rate of progression vary widely among glaucoma patients. The rate of progression is the strongest predictive factor for further progression. In case of mean deviation and visual field index, all the visual fields are considered for calculating the rate of progression. Here, mean deviation recorded over a couple of times. This is the basal two fields are averages and comparing it with the following up. And change over the time, you can calculate the slope of the line. For example, here, the rate of progression is 1.7. The most accepted rate is one decibel per year. This mostly will ensure that the patient will not suffer a bad quality of life, regardless of age. But when it is higher than one, this is a red flag to change the treatment to go for a lower IOP. The problem with the mean deviation that it is not only affected by glaucoma, but also can be affected by cataract. Also, the problem with the mean deviation that it ignores detailed special information of the field. It is insensitive to early localized changes in the field. The problem is different regions of the visual field may deteriorate at different rates. So before we see that event analysis can show localized changes early, while the trend analysis here need longer time and it ignores localized changes. In the octopus, you can see the same, the mean deviation slope over the time here. And also, you can see the probability that this is being abnormal by 5% or 1%. If there is improvement, it will be green by 5% or 1%. Then, if you see this mark, you mean that you reach to the floor effect, that the mean deviation reaches to the minus 20, and no further calculation can be dependently or surely be followed. In the new software of Octopus, there is diffuse defect and localized defect. Diffuse defect is the value of the patient recorded in the first one quarter of the field compared with the normal, while localized defect is the rest here compared to the normal. These values are recorded each time and a regression line for the values can be shown. So in the octopus, now you have regression for the mean, regression line for the square root loss variance, and this is the standard deviation, regression line for diffused effect or localized effect for either eye. Also, the new software of the octopus start to gather adjacent points make an average for these points to get a better information. If the value is within normal, then you just get a plus sign. 
but if it's higher than normal then you get a number and this number will be in a regular uh, font if the probability is 5% or bold if the probability is 1%. And again, if this is repeated several times, then you have a trend analysis. And this ch change, you will see that with the, these signs mean that it's worsening with a probability 5%. And this means it's worsening with the probability 1%. So you get here an example of trend, but not only one location, a group of locations. This is, sorry, an event. And here an example of the trend. Now, the visual field index details about this, you can see it in another presentation. It has the advantage that it is calculated depending on the pattern deviation, so it's not affected by cataract. And also the sensitivity of the central part are raised compared to the sensitivity of the periphery. If the visual field index is recorded a couple of times, at least five or six times, then you can create this line and this, you can see the rate of progression. In this example, the rate of progression is minus 3.7%. The most accepted is 3%. When it is higher than that, it's not accepted, you need to change your treatment. The confidence interval tell the clinician how sure that this value is accurate. This is an example where this loop is minimal. It is acceptable to keep on like this. While in this example, this loop is minus three. This is the borderline. If it's more than that, you need to change your treatment. This study, it was done for the visual field index recorded in the over eight years. 11 fields were done, and then they used the first five years to draw the visual field index regression line and start to see the calculation here in the first couple of times. How much of this will be actually achieved in reality? They found that 70% of the patient had a predicted final visual field index within plus or minus 10% of the estimated visual field, finally. Now, keep in mind that for each decibel in the mean deviation, you have 3% change in the visual field index. Rate of progression equal or higher than 3% visual field index, or one decibel per year, can lead to a significant loss of quality of life in almost any age. So this is a red line we try to avoid reaching. What about classification or staging of glaucoma? We are accustomed to classify glaucoma as mild, moderate, severe, depending on the mean deviation, and this is the equal percentage for these limits. So, once the rate of visual field loss has been established, a natural next step is to consider the likelihood of patients suffering visual disability within their expected lifetime. In this example, the left eye is progressing like this. This is the actual result, and this is the expected, and this is the right eye, and this is what's expected. So, you don't need to change any treatment here, but for this eye, if the patient you left him is going to suffer, so you need to change the IOP for this eye to change this loop into a less steep one. Examples here. This is the basic two test. This is the glaucoma probability, the event analysis, 
And here in between, we have the visual field index, the trend analysis. These are the actual results, and this is the expected in the next five years. Another example. Now let's see the difference between event analysis and trend analysis. Event analysis focus only on a significant magnitude of difference between two values. Event analysis require fewer visual fields, so less time to produce definitive results. So may detect rapid deterioration in the visual field more quickly than the trend analysis. On the other hand, trend analysis is an estimate, it estimates the rate of visual field progression. It takes longer time to establish progression and the changes of each time affect the result. Trend analysis have a higher diagnostic sensitivity than event analysis. Now we move to the last part 